A question that I get asked repeatedly is how do I land a job as a software tester, whether it be a manual tester, automation tester, SDET, and so on. So today, I'll give you the roadmap. That way, next time someone asks me that question, I can point them to this video. If you're new here, my name is The Test Lead. I make content to help you on your software testing journey. Today's topic is a roadmap to landing your first software testing job. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, let's get started. Here is our list for today. With timestamps, that way if you wanna jump around, you can. Cause this video may be a little longer. One, learning the base skill set. Two, researching the job market. Three, adding additional skills. Four, building projects to showcase your skills. Five, applying to jobs. Six, getting comfortable in interviews. Seven, analyzing why you aren't getting hired. And then eight, reapplying and improving your chances. Like I said, if you just need part of the video, you can jump around as you please. But I would suggest just sitting down, getting some popcorn and a notebook, and just watching the full thing through. Now let's dive in. Learning the base skill set. Before applying to any job, you have to have the base skill set at a minimum. You can't apply for jobs that you're not qualified for. Start with the regular testing principles, test documentation, software development lifecycle, and all the other manual QA engineering skills. If you wanna learn about coding and automation, do that after. But just start with the base skill set. There are numerous ways for you to learn a skill set depending on your time allocation availability as well as your budget, but just know there's no excuse for you not to learn it because there are free resources. They may not be as good as some of the paid resources, but they're still out there. Next, now that you have the base skill set, now it's time to actually research the job market. Before diving into job applications, take time to research the software testing job market. Understand the type of roles available and the current skills that they're asking for. You already have the base skill set, but now just research the other skills that are currently in demand. Check out listings on platforms like LinkedIn, Indeed, or Glassdoor to identify skills employers are looking for. You may find roles are asking for certain tools or coding languages, such as using JMeter or Cypress. And last but not least, company culture and expectations. Actually research what different companies are actually like and what they expect. Some may be fully remote, others they want you to work 70, 80 hours a week and actually list that in their job descriptions. So just do this research so you have realistic expectations. Because you may get to this point and think, well, maybe this isn't for me. What they expect, I'm not willing to give for a job. And if that's it, and that's the case, then okay. You save time and money by not investing further. But still, just do the research. So at least you know what you're getting into. Now that you've developed the base skill set, as well as researched the current job market, now it's time for you to add more skills. The problem is many people just get stuck on a base skill set that millions of other people also have. So how are you gonna stand out looking like everybody else? Simple, you add additional skills that current people and employers are actually looking for. You could know how to ride a bike, but there's no jobs that are related to riding a bike, that skill is useless when applying for jobs. But if a job asks you to drive a car, learning 
how to drive a car becomes a valuable skill to add. While manual or human testing is very valuable, many companies are also expecting you to know at least some basic coding. So stop being scared and actually learn it. I know it might be a little intimidating at first, but let's dive in. It's always hard for everybody in the beginning, but just focus on getting started and staying consistent. I would start with Python, and then from there, learn about Selenium. That way you have the basics for automation as well. And then any other tools or software that you see and many job requirements, research those as well. The new thing this year might be mobile testing. So research the tools and software for mobile testing. Things like Appium for automation or software like BrowserStack that lets you test on different browsers and emulators and devices from your browser. But research what the current trends are. Because once again, knowing the bare minimum isn't enough in today's job market. You have to do the extra. And the more closely your skills align to job applications, the better chance you have of getting callbacks and getting hired for that position. So now that you've developed the base skill set, researched the job market, and added new skills that are relevant in today's market, now it's time to add different projects to your portfolio, showing off your skill set, especially if you don't have any prior experience. I'll try to create tutorial videos about projects this year, but high level for manual testing, I would test public websites, create test plans, test cases, test scenarios, actually go through the software development life cycle, track any bugs that you find and document it all and publish it maybe on a personal website. That'll be your portfolio. That way in interviews, you can reference it and say yes, as mentioned on my resume and in my portfolio, I tested and showcased I have the skill set by testing apple.com or amazon.com and go through the test cases that you made and why you decide those were relevant test cases and so on. The same with automation. Just automate test cases and test scenarios for popular websites. Talk about what you did, the process, and so on. For API testing, you can API test using tools like Postman and test many public APIs. There are even demo sites that allow you to test their APIs. And the same with performance testing. I wouldn't suggest practicing performance testing on real websites because you might actually crash it, but on websites that have dummy data and are just like QA pages, they may allow you to do performance testing there. But having a portfolio with actual work that you've done can help a lot. Piggybacking on that, you can try to get actual real experience at this point because you have this skill set, you have your portfolio, go to local stores in your town or city, go to the mall. Every place that sells items in today's world has a website and they may even have a mobile application. Offer to test it for free. I know you're like, whoa, how can you promote free labor? This will help you get real experience for your resume. With that real experience, you can get a real job that pays real money. So don't be stuck up and feel too good to volunteer or have an internship that doesn't pay at this point in your career. Your focus is just on getting experience that you can use to land your first full-time job. So like I said, any store that you interact with, especially little mom and pop stores in your town, just offer to test their website and say in return, I don't want any money. I just want to use you as a reference on my resume. Simple enough. That way, if somebody calls them and asks them, 
hey, do you know Josh Smith who says they tested your website? They're going to say, oh, yes, they did and did a wonderful job. That means a lot. Now that you've developed the skill set, researched the job market, and built out a portfolio, finally, you can start applying to jobs. Tailor your resume. Customize your resume for each job application. Highlight skills that match the job description and emphasize relevant certifications, coursework, and projects. Use keywords. Many companies use applicant tracking systems or ATS to filter resumes. Include relevant keywords from the job description to ensure the resume gets noticed. For right now, apply widely. Apply to a variety of roles. Don't be discouraged by rejections. Getting a job in tech often takes persistence. Use job portals. Leverage job platforms like LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor, and niche job boards for tech roles. Networking with others can also exponentially increase your chances of landing a role. Everybody should have a LinkedIn profile. It's free to make. You can show your projects and connect with many people to build out your network. Quick break. If you're enjoying the video so far, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you need help on your software testing journey, check out my website, thetestinglead.com. There, I have books, content, and courses to help you on your software testing journey. Now, back to the video. Next up, getting comfortable in interviews. Now that you finally started applying for jobs, there's a good chance you'll be asked to do interviews. Software testing interviews usually have behavioral portions as well as technical portions. Let's talk about how to prepare for them. Behavioral questions. Be ready to discuss your experiences, problem solving approaches, and how you handle challenges in a testing environment. Technical questions. Practice answering questions related to software testing, test case writing, debugging, bug reporting, coding, if that's the role you're going for, and so on. Mock interviews. Consider doing mock interviews with friends or using platforms like Primp or interviewing.io. This can help you gain confidence and improve your interview performance. Soft skills. Many software testing roles require strong communication and collaboration skills. Be prepared to showcase your ability to work in teams and communicate effectively with developers and other stakeholders. Practice makes perfect. The more you practice and recite different responses, the more natural it will come in a real interview. Because the worst thing that can happen is you get asked a question and then just freeze up in the interview. And now you're, you're sad or mad at yourself because you knew the answer to that question, but you just froze up and kind of think of the response on the spot. How do you beat that? By practicing it in advance. I have tons of video going over interview prep. I, of course, will be making more this year. So stay tuned. And that's why it's important for you to subscribe. Now, after you've applied to probably a couple hundred places, some weeks have passed, you've probably got an interview or two, but maybe didn't land it. Analyze why you aren't getting hired for these jobs. Here's where you have to actually look in the mirror and identify, am I not getting callbacks at all when I submit my resume or am I getting stuck at different rounds of the interview process. If you are getting no callbacks on jobs you apply for, then you may have a poor resume. In short, your resume is clear, concise, and tailored to the job description. Avoid errors and keep it focused on the skills and achievements. Let's say you're getting callbacks 
but not getting offers at the end, there may be a skill set gap. It could be due to a mismatch between your skills and the job requirements. Take time to fill in any gaps and add new items to your skill set. Now that you've done all the hard work and then looked in the mirror and identified some reasons why you might not be getting hired, you had those tough discussions with yourself, you've added more skills or refined your resume, now it's time to get back out there and apply to more jobs. Remember, if they want a cover letter or anything else, do that because many people skip those job applications so they have fewer applicants, increasing your chances to land a job. So at this point, update your resume, tailor it to certain jobs as you're applying for it. You may have three or four different resumes depending on the different particular roles you're applying for. That way, if they're looking for particular skills from job A, make sure on resume A, those skills are listed first. Job B may want a different skill set that you have, so tell your resume B to make sure that any recruiter reading your resume sees those skills right away. So improve your resume, and then you might need to actually just practice answering questions back and forth with people because you get nervous. That's human nature, especially because you're like, I need this job. You might start sweating and stuff. So just have mock interviews with your friends. Hey, if you want to have it with me and make a video out of it for this channel, just let me know. But just practice talking to people about software testing. And if you have to, just learn more skills, make yourself more valuable, giving yourself more jobs they can possibly apply for. And most importantly, just stay persistent and don't get discouraged. You're gonna get a lot of rejection letters. I hate to tell you that, but somebody has to tell you the truth. Your first job won't be your dream job. The main point is to just get your foot in the door. Because once you have real experience at a real job, that second job is much easier to find. You can also hold the leverage now because in the beginning, we have no experience, the jobs hold all the leverage and it's hard to negotiate. But your second job or third job, you now have the power because you can say, well, I can join your job or stay at my current job. You also can negotiate salaries, time off, and other benefits once you have your foot in the door. So just focus on getting your foot in the door. Like I said, it may not be the best circumstances, but just get that first job. I know this video was a little longer, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you end up finding a job this year, make sure to leave a comment. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for future videos, also leave a comment. And according to YouTube algorithm, this video here and this video here will be best for you next. But most importantly, don't forget this, learn something new today.